This is a video about describing motion in physics. It's made with those taking AQA GCSE physics in mind, but these are the same concepts that we talk about in year seven and year eight, just with a little bit more maths. So you may find it useful even at that level. In the course of this video, we'll describe what the difference is between scalar and vector quantities, define the terms distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration, calculate mean speed given distance and time, state some typical speeds for walking, running, and cycling, and calculate mean acceleration given speed and time. Let's start with a bit of revision. What is the difference between scalar and vector quantities? All of the quantities in physics, all of the numbers that we do calculations with, can be split into scalars and vectors. Scalar quantities don't have a direction, they only have a magnitude. So for instance, temperature or energy or time. Vector quantities have a magnitude and a stated direction. So if you need to change the direction and go back the way you came, you have to use a minus number. Force would be a good example of this. If I push with a force of 100 newtons to the left, or a force of 100 newtons to the right, then the motion of my object will be fundamentally different. This idea of scalars and vectors is really important for this topic because we're going to look at two pairs of quantities where the difference is that one is a scalar and one is a vector. So distance and displacement and speed and velocity. Let's start by looking at distance and displacement. Now these two quantities sound like they're going to be the same thing because they're both to do with how far away you are from where you started. But distance is a scalar, whereas displacement is a vector. The easiest way to get your head around this is to imagine you're going on a journey. In a village, there are three houses and they sit at the three corners of an equilateral triangle. I start out in the first house and I walk 400 meters to the second house. From there, I walk 400 meters to the third house. Firstly, how far have I walked? Well, 800 meters, 400 plus 400. That's the distance. Now, what about how far actually am I away from home? How far am I going to have to walk to get back? Also 400 meters because it's an equilateral triangle. That's my displacement. Distance is how far an object moves. It doesn't involve direction, so that makes it a scalar quantity. It's the answer you would give if someone asked you how far you'd walk today. And it's the number that you'd think about if you were trying to calculate how much fuel you needed to go on a certain journey. Displacement is different because it involves both the distance that the object moves, although measured in a straight line from the start point to the finish point, and also the direction of that straight line. That means that it's a vector quantity because it does involve direction. So here, I would say that the distance I've traveled is 800 meters, but the displacement is 400 due south. My other pair of quantities are speed and velocity. Speed is a measure of what the change in distance has been in a given time. And this is a scalar quantity. It doesn't matter what direction I'm traveling. Velocity is defined as speed in a given direction. So for instance, speed to the north. So because it has a fixed direction, it's a vector quantity. If I run at five meters a second due north, and then I turn around and run at five meters a second due south, my speed hasn't changed, but my velocity has. My velocity will have changed from five meters a second to minus five meters a second. And this is how I show that I've changed direction. Now it's time for the first of the equations we'll be using in this video. Distance traveled equals speed multiplied by time. This is number six from the GCSE physics equation sheet. And as with all of these equations, you need to memorize both the formula itself and also the units for each quantity. Here, we're usually going to measure distance in meters, speed in meters per second, and time in seconds. However, the motion equations are slightly unusual in that we don't always use the SI units. And this is because the units for speed are a compound unit. They're made out of the units for distance traveled and time. So you could also measure a distance in kilometers, a time in hours, and report a speed in kilometers per hour. Whichever units you're using for a question, just make sure that the units for distance and speed start with the same order of magnitude. So either they both start with meters or they both start with kilometers and then make sure that the units for speed finish with the same units that you're using for time. Now it's time to practice substituting some numbers in and calculating some distances. So if you haven't already grabbed your calculator, now would be a good time to do so. For a motion question, it's pretty unlikely that they're going to say to you, a person is traveling at a speed of five meters a second for a time of 60 seconds. They're expecting you to just infer that from the units. So for this first question, 
The number five represents a speed, and I can tell that because of the units that come after it. So I'm going to take that five and put it where speed is in my equation. And then likewise, I'm going to take the number 60 and put that where time is. So now I know that I'm going to do five multiplied by 60, and I'm going to get a distance of 300 metres. Pause the video and do the next four for yourself. So when a person travels at 12 metres per second for 100 seconds, 12 multiplied by 100, they will travel 1,200 metres. The third person will travel 2,700 metres, the fourth person will travel 765 metres, and the fifth person will travel 1,650 metres. Now, sometimes I don't want to calculate distance. Maybe I want to calculate speed. So in order to do that, I need to make speed the subject of this equation. I need to get it on its own. Right now, speed is multiplied by time. To get rid of something from a physics equation, what we need to do is to undo the operation it's currently doing. So right now, time is multiplying. And to undo a multiply, you divide. So I'm going to divide my right time by time and therefore get rid of it. And whatever I do to the right side of an equation, I have to do to the left. So I'm going to divide both sides by time. What I'm left with is that distance travelled divided by time is equal to speed. So now that I have speed as the subject of my equation, I can do some more calculations. Now that we've rearranged the equation, you can pause the video and calculate the speed for each of these five scenarios. Remember to use the units to tell you which number represents which quantity. Hopefully you realise that the numbers with M's after them represent distance and the numbers with S's after them represent time. And we're always dividing distance by time in order to get a speed. So to start with, 500 metres divided by 200 seconds gives me a speed of 2.5 metres per second. 240 divided by 80 gives me a speed of 3 metres a second. 360 divided by 48 is 7.5 metres a second. 75 divided by 150 is 0.5 metres a second. And finally, 72,000 divided by 900 gives me a speed of 80 metres a second. While we're on the subject of speed, AQA say that you should know the typical speeds for walking, running and cycling. And they report them as 1.5 metres per second for walking, 3 metres per second for running and 6 metres per second for cycling. The little wiggle there is called a tilde and that represents approximately equal to. They also make the point that it's not just moving objects that have speeds. Sound also has a speed, and its speed in air tends to be about 330 metres per second. In different media, sound will have a different speed. So for instance, in water, it moves much faster because the particles are much closer together, and it can reach speeds of up to 1500 metres per second. The next quantity that we need to define is acceleration. And in physics, acceleration is about the change in velocity over a given time. Remember, velocity is speed in a given direction. So the velocity will change if you speed up or if you slow down, but also if you change direction. The next quantity that we need to define is acceleration. And in physics, acceleration is about the change in velocity that happens within a given time frame. So remember, velocity is about speed in a given direction. So an object accelerates if it speeds up, if it slows down, or if it changes direction. So it's a broader definition of acceleration than you might use in everyday life, where we tend to only think about objects speeding up. Acceleration can be calculated using the seventh equation from the physics equation sheet. So acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time. And we can calculate change in velocity by doing the final velocity subtract the initial velocity or the starting velocity. Remember, acceleration is a vector. It has a direction and also it can be a negative number. A negative acceleration tells you that the object is slowing down rather than speeding up. We measure acceleration in metres per second squared. Time is in seconds and velocity is in metres per second, just like speed is. Let's put this into practice and try some calculations. For each question, you need to start out by calculating the change in velocity. You always do this by doing the final velocity, subtract the initial velocity. 
Then once you know what the change in velocity is, you divide by the time taken. Pause the video and calculate these five accelerations now. So for question one, we've sped up from two meters a second to five meters a second. That's a change in velocity of five take away two, which is three meters per second. Then once we have that change in velocity, we can divide by 0.6 to get an acceleration of five meters per second squared. Remember, the squared is nothing to do with what you're doing with the numbers, it's just part of the units. Then for question two, we speed up from six meters per second to 12 meters per second. 12 takes six is six, and this divided by 2.4 gives me an acceleration of 2.5 meters per second squared. For question three, we're actually slowing down. But remember, you always work out change in velocity by doing the final velocity take away the initial velocity. So three take away 15 will be a negative number here, minus 12. That shows me that the object is slowing down. Minus 12 divided by 0 0.8 gives me an acceleration of minus 15 meters per second squared. So that means that every second, my velocity decreases by minus 15 meters per second. For question four, we're speeding up again from 0.5 to 1.5, so that's a change of one meter per second. And then I divide this by 0.25 to get an acceleration of four meters per second squared. And then finally, we're slowing down again from 12 meters per second down to nine. So remember, it's always final take initial. Nine take away 12 is minus three, and minus three divided by 1.2 gives me an acceleration of minus 2.5 meters per second squared. Finally, for those of you who are sitting higher tier, we have one more equation to look at. And the good news is that you don't have to memorize this one because it's on the second part of the physics equation sheet, which you are given in the exam. However, you still need to know what the units are for all the parts of the equation, and you still need to be able to rearrange it. The purpose of this equation is that it allows us to calculate acceleration even when we don't have a time. So we have a final velocity and an initial velocity and a distance, but we want to know the acceleration. We're just going to look at one worked example of this type of question. Here we want to calculate what the acceleration is when a car travels 200 meters while braking from an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. Firstly, I need to rearrange the formula so that acceleration is the subject. I do this by multiplying everything by two multiplied by the distance, so two s. Now I can substitute in some numbers. So I know that my initial velocity is 10, so I can substitute in 10 where it says u. And I know that the distance traveled was 200, so I can substitute that in as well. Now, although it doesn't seem like it to start with, I have been given the um, final velocity in the question because it tells me that the car is now stationary. So therefore my final velocity is zero. So I've now got zero squared, take away 10 squared, divided by 400. That simplifies to be minus 100 divided by 400, which is minus 0.25. And then don't forget the units, meters per second squared. I hope that this was a useful introduction to describing the motion of objects. We do cover this topic further in the videos about distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. So look out for those for more help. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe using the button below.